Uh, my name is Walter Kay. I'm professor of psychiatry and director of the eating disorder program at uh, UCSD in San Diego. Uh, the topic I'm going to talk about today is whether anorexia nervosa is an eating disorder. And what I mean about that is that even though we call these eating disorders, we actually don't understand whether there's a, some alteration of eating behavior. Um, and so I'm going to present some, some new evidence that helps us understand why people with anorexia eat the way that they eat. And I'm going to do this in three parts. The first part is going to be on behavior. I think most people are aware that it's very hard for the average person to lose weight. So people go on a diet and they struggle and they don't lose a great deal of weight and there's a very high recidivism. By that we mean that they often put that weight back on again. There's something very different about people with anorexia, and, and these are individuals that can lose a, a substantial amount of weight and, and not only keep it off, but eat very small amounts of food every day uh, for months, for years at a time. So how are they able to do this? What, what is there about uh, anorexia that makes people able to lose this amount of weight and eat such small amounts of food? We, do, we don't actually know a lot about eating disorder behavior action. Uh, there, are, there aren't that many studies, so this is pretty, this is poorly understood. We, we do know something about the symptoms just from clinical observation. We see people have ritualized eating. They, they often eat small portions. They often tend to be vegetarians. Uh, they, they have distortions about food. They think that they're eating a lot more than they actually are. Um, they, they're really particularly scared about eating fats, but they actually eat enough proteins, at least in proportion to the total amount of food they eat. That is, they eat about 10% proteins, and they have unusual food combinations. Uh, and, and despite the, the fact that they don't eat very much, they're also at the same time obsessed with foods and calories. So they'll cook for other people, they'll collect recipes, they'll window shop in, in supermarkets for food. Um, so there's this, this uh, on one hand, being very obsessed about food, and the other hand, not being able to eat. Um, anorexics, uh, while they like sweet, they really tend to dislike uh, high-fat foods. And the few studies that have been done suggest that this is present when people are underweight and even persist after their weight restored. And in the few studies that have been done, uh, there's been some evidence that there actually is some altered regulation. So, for example, if people eat sugar, you become satiated to sugar. That is, you want to stop eating it. But that kind of satiation doesn't seem to occur in anorexia. And again, it persists after weight restoration. Uh, also, we, we see very clear uh, relationships between uh, how people feel and how they eat in the eating disorders. Uh, people with anorexia often tell us there's something about eating that makes them very anxious and that not eating makes them feel better. It makes some of those uncomfortable feelings go away. And I'm not going to talk really very much about bulimia nervosa today, but bulimia is, is in ways very different and opposite of that. And people with bulimia actually tell you kind of the opposite, that they, when, when they're feeling uh, tense, stressed, uh, anxious, they find that food is a comfort, and, and it helps them make those uncomfortable feelings kind of go away. So in a way that they're very opposite of anorexia, at least in their eating styles. Now, a couple of things that we ought to just discuss. Most people with anorexia don't stop eating completely. What they do is they eat less than they need to, to certainly to gain weight, and often they eat less than they need to to, to maintain their weight. But they might eat 200, 500, maybe more than that calories uh, a day. And, and I, as we go through this, I'm going to talk a little bit more about caloric requirements. So to lose weight, they're probably eating less than about 20 calories per kilogram. And I'll explain more about, about that later. Uh, now, in terms of how much weight people lose, that's dependent on several different issues. It, it of course, depends on how much you're eating. Uh, it depends on how much you're exercising. And it also depends on compensatory changes. So when you don't take in enough fuel, when you just don't have enough energy to, to, to uh, maintain your body's weight, your body goes through several compensatory changes in order, in order to deal with that. And what it does is it does things to shut off your energy metabolism. So 
a lot of the calories we take in is actually transformed into heat and then it's it's it keeps us warm um, and is then dissipated into the into the into the environment. People with anorexia become very uh, vasal. What would, the term would be vasoconstricted, and that is that they uh, they shut down the blood flow to their arms and legs, so their arms and legs get very cold. But they're done dumping off heat that way. Uh, they also have a low heart rate and a low blood pressure. That's a reflection again of of low metabolism, and and it's a sign that we often use with anorexia to know just how malnourished they are because the more malnourished they are, the lower their heart rate and their blood pressure, and at some point, it's going to be so low that it might not sustain life. And there's also a lot of hormonal changes that that occur uh, as a way of conserving energy. Starvation also has some very very. Uh, substantial and severe consequences, for example, on brain function. It's not unusual that people with anorexia tell us that they even feel worse in some ways. They feel both better immediately after they they don't eat, but they also, as that kind of wears off, they can also feel feel worse. And so it's kind of in some ways like drug abuse, where people might not use a drug and they temporarily feel better, but as that wears off, they feel worse. And people with anorexia probably go through similar kinds of, of cycles like that, where they get so starved, then they then they get into this dilemma where they're feeling worse, but if they eat, they also feel anxious and there's just nowhere to go. There's also uh, cognitive and memory and problem solving and concentration problems that occur. And we know that we when we do measure neurotransmitters in the brain, that these values become very, very altered in people who are starved with anorexia nervosa. Uh, another thing that happens is that people stop having menstrual periods. And actually, in, instead of having the kind of uh, menstrual periods and, and the hormonal kind of changes you have in adolescence and adulthood, they, they literally revert to childhood in terms of their hormonal changes, the gonadal hormonal changes. And this may account for some of the distortions and even kind of childlike thinking that you see when people are very, very malnourished with anorexia. Uh, another very severe consequence is soft bones or osteoporosis, uh, where people's bones uh, just don't have the strength that they that it should have, and, and they end up with a lot of fractures. Um, and another problem is that malnutrition may actually make it harder to respond to both to therapy, both talk therapies as well as medication, because the effects on the brain are so powerful that it's hard to reverse that um, of anything short than just uh, better caloric intake. So nutritional restoration is a key component of treatment. So why is it difficult for people with anorexia to eat and gain weight? Well, first there's this increased anxiety before and during meals, and as I've mentioned, this anxiety-reducing aspect of starvation. Uh, for most of us, food is pleasurable and starvation is aversive, and we see just the opposite in people with anorexia. Uh, they have this very intense fear of being fat. It becomes a preoccupation. They think of it almost all their waking hours, uh, this relentless pursuit of thinness, um, and these food and weight uh, sessions and rituals where it may take hours to actually eat a meal. Again, another reason why they can't get a lot of calories in. And it becomes the most important thing to them. It's, it consumes their, their life and their thinking. Um, and along with this, there's a term that we use, which is egocentric. And by that, we mean that this is, this is not foreign. When, when people often come in and they have something like a depression, they'll say, to us, gee, I feel terrible. I'm depressed. I'm sad. You know, help, me, help me get better. Uh, I don't want to feel this way. And we don't see that with people with anorexia. They'll, they'll actually often be dragged in by their families, and, and their family, of course, is very concerned. They're afraid that this, this, uh, this adolescent uh, might die from anorexia nervosa. Um, but the person themselves doesn't see themselves as having a problem and doesn't want help. Uh, doesn't have a lot of insight and is very resistant. And then finally, the other problem is that stress and conflict often make the eating even more difficult for people with anorexia, so they're very sensitive to stress. In terms of food choices, a lot of people with anorexia tend to be either vegetarians or vegan. They avoid red meats and animal fats. They eat the same food choices every day. Um, and one of the things that happens then with this is that you're both taking in a small amount of calories and you're also not having a wide variety of food choices. So people become malnourished, not only because they're not taking enough calories, but they not, may not be taking in 
the vitamins or minerals or essential amino acids or essential fats that you need in your diet. Um, there's a, a ritualistic, obsessive quality, uh, often these odd combinations of food and very slow eating. And uh, as I mentioned before, the, despite these, uh, this reluctance to eat, this obsessive interest in food and calories and cooking for others. In terms of trying to get people to eat and gain weight with anorexia nervosa, uh, one of the problems with eating a lot of vegetables is vegetables are mostly fiber, they're very low, uh, low in calories, and you have to eat a large amount of calories, to a large, a large amount of vegetables to, to gain weight. And it's simply not possible for people with anorexia to actually probably eat enough vegetables to gain weight. They need to really eat high density foods and particularly fats and maybe even animal fats because those may be essential, uh, essential types of fats that they may be missing in their diet. But to say this, we actually there's been relatively little research done on the best food choices and exactly how you should feed uh, somebody with anorexia nervosa. What, what are the best foods to choose for them, uh, especially when you often have this kind of struggle and dilemma uh, where they want to eat a, a high vegetable kind of diet and they, and they don't want to eat the, the fats that they need to gain weight. But fats are really critical. They're calorie dense. And although there's not a lot of data, as I've said, that there may be a, a, a depletion of some essential fats that people need in their diet. As it turns out, our cell walls are, are made up of fats. The cells in the brain, are the cell walls are made up of fat. And if you're not taking in enough fats or the right fats, it actually may have some very serious consequences in how your brain functions. And then the other question is, are some foods, do they make people with anorexia more anxious? Why, why is it that they're so f afraid of fats? Is there something anxiety inducing about fats? We don't know that, but that's a very kind of promising and important kind of uh, uh, research direction that, that we ought to go in. So the keys to success in waking and approach is the, recognizing that there's a self-soothing benefit to starvation uh, or for people that binge or purge uh, overeating and nothing else works as well. Um, that there, for people with anorexia, this seems to be a, a mechanism that really makes them feel better. Uh, and there's not a lot in life that otherwise that makes them feel better. So it's not a manipulation. It's, it's, it's somebody with anorexia trying to do really the best they can given the biology. And in the next couple of talks, we're going to talk a bit about the biology and why people are driven to eat this way. But we do know that low stress and low conflict and high structure and positive expectations can actually be very helpful in getting people uh, to, to get better with anorexia. This is not something you can argue or threaten or, or out obsess somebody with anorexia. Uh, it's not going to be an attack that works. It's, it's more a question of reassurance and reason and working together in a way that they can work together. Uh, although saying this, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. Um, bonding and nurturing is very important. Uh, an alliance with families and significant others in terms of treatment centers is really critical. And uh, another thing that we find is people with anorexia tend to be very self-disciplined and self-controlled. They often use this as a way of not eating and controlling what feelings of, of hunger, but we can also help people with anorexia use this in a more positive way uh, and, and get them to eat a goal amount every day uh, using that self-discipline. And also having people with anorexia learn from failure in the sense that uh, they need to realize that uh, um, they need to try out new things and it's not going to work right away, but it will work in the long run.